Hello, the purpose of today's demonstration is to show you the power of the Foglight custom dashboards for the end user products. What I want to do now is I'm going to log in as the business user and this user is a user that was granted the privileges to create their own custom dashboards as well as modify existing custom dashboards that they may have. In this case, this dashboard called My Ecom was designated as the home page. As you can see, this is where we directly went as we logged in. So on the upper left hand corner, they have a synthetic transaction measurements map. And this will show the status of all the transaction robots that are played back from around the world to help measure the availability and performance of the ecom application. So this user would just get an indication here if there were any problems from any of the locations. The business transaction conversions is a bit more detailed. We can look at the ecom funnel and you can see for this ecom funnel, um, there are 622 transactions started and 90 completed over the last four hours. You can see a trend here if there's any big anomalies and the period mean or the conversion rate is about 15%. And the same here for customer registrations. And just to show you a quick example, if you wanted to modify this business transaction conversion lists, I can open up my right slide pane and I can click on this little arrow here to lock it. And then I'd be able to go to my data and under the business user reports, you'll see my transactions. What I'm also interested in here, you can see we have the buy funnel. We have the customer registrations. I also want MasterCard transactions. So I can take the MasterCard transactions and drag it right on top of this chart and it'll add the one for me. Okay, What I did there is I added another chart instead of adding it to the existing chart. But what I want to do, let me delete that one. So I'm going to remove this one. And just to show you, we can either add a whole new section or a whole new uh, chart section, or I can drag it onto an existing one, like right here. So if I take MasterCard here and I drag it onto this existing one, it'll just add another row to that table and measure that as well. Now what I could also do, as I drag these in, it's there's no need to build your workflow and to build all these customizations. The workflows are already built in for you. So if I click on the Ecom Funnel, for example, you'll see it'll pop up the funnel and it'll show me the breakdown of, of basically what I'm seeing in this, where, where 622 people started and 90 people completed an order for the 14% conversion rate. If there's any anomalies, I can see the alerts on the anomalies. So in this case, 118 people dropping off at the confirmation step is abnormal. And from here, I'd be able to drill right in and go to the replay. So this will show me all the sections. Actually, it's a sampling. So there were 114, and I got 107 of those 114. I'd be able to look at all the metadata here. So there's a lot of groupings you can do. I can export the results to Excel if I wanted to pivot on any of these different fields. I can add or remove fields for the metadata. For example, if I don't want to see the sale amount, which I have in there now, I can pull the sale amount out of the metadata search so I can clean up the chart a bit. So this, this would be all the information I wanted to export. And of course, all these different columns are configurable per transaction. So this is the data I wanted to see every time I drilled on this transaction that we're currently looking at. So from here I can pick one of these sessions or once I get it down to a subset of the sessions I want I can go in and click on those and I can see why did the confirmation happen and order place did not happen. So I can go through step by step and to the right hand side is the replay highlighted in orange is what they clicked on to get to the next page. So I can go through one page at a time and I'd be able to see what they filled in on each of the pages. Of course, masking out, if I wanted to mask out credit card numbers or password, that can be done as well. And then it basically this is the last page. So what you'll see here is if we replay a couple of these and we narrow down to search the search to specific uh, attributes in the sessions, we'll see a lot of these come back with invalid format errors. So I'd be able to go back to my search here and that was one sample of a session. I can go pick out another session with another type of browser and another username and I can walk through that session step by step again or click right down on it and I can see if I can find that same problem. 
So what I'd be eventually able to do is find all the users and group all the users that saw this error and, and do a, have a good example of what the impact has been on my revenues. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, let's, let's go back to that custom dashboard now. And that's just an example of one of the workflows. There's, there's different workflows underneath each of the different metrics, but those workflows are already programmed in. So what I have here, instead of looking at the individual transactions, I'm looking at people coming in from particular geographies. So in this case, New York, Los Angeles, Sydney, Aliso Viejo. And what I can do here is I can see, I'm, I'm looking at trends of the number of users, and I'm also looking at page counts. So this gives me an idea of my volumes from these different geographies, and I, I could sort those or watch those or look for certain errors coming from those. So a lot of times what we'll be able to do is monitor specific locations that have um, attempts to uh, to fraud the system. So I can watch for certain ones from Africa or known bad locations and look for a lot of 400 or 500 errors, which would probably indicate some type of attack. Or I could just watch it for marketing trends. So I released an ad in northeastern United States, and I want to watch the major cities there to see if that ad is having an impact when I released it at 9 o'clock, if that is actually going up. Am I seeing a big peak in, in pages or a big peak? And, then, and if I don't want to, like let's say Sydney, for example, that ad is over, that campaign's over. I don't want to watch Sydney anymore. So I'd be able to come here, and I'd be able to click on my chart, and this will let me edit what I have in here. So I can edit the properties. And I can go into the objects I have, and then I can remove uh, one or more of the objects. So my locations here, I'd be able to remove this one and apply that. And you'll see now we just have it narrowed down to New York. The application cash flows, this is an example of a custom one. So what I did is I, I looked for the e-com funnel and there were properties of lost sale and order value. These were attributes of the sessions that we saw in the session search earlier. So what I'm able to do is overlay these on each other so I can see the effects. Uh, another one here, I'm watching an ad campaign. So I'm basically having counters on all the different coupons that are that come in. So this is a coupon code that somebody clicked through, and you can see the counts over time of these different coupons that they're running. So this is basically a dynamic variable, and what that means is for every new coupon code that we see issued, we'll start a counter for it. So the counters get started automatically. And then what you do is you would just drag and drop by going to My Analytics you would see those different coupon counters in here and these are the different ones so I can drag those if I wanted to watch the free TV coupon I can drag that on top of my existing chart and then I'd start watching that one as well so it's very easy to create and modify these custom dashboards as you need to I can edit the properties here and let's just remove that free TV one back off there so a dashboard like this, um, if you go in and you're shopping around for what you need inside of the, the drag and drop tree, it should take you about 15 minutes to build one of these custom dashboards. Now, the last one I'm going to look at here are response codes. So these are, again, the same use cases here. The only difference is that instead of dragging the metric that are counters for the coupons, we drag the metrics that are counters for the error codes. I want to do just to give you a little example here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new dashboard and I'm going to go to general and say create dashboard I can also do the same thing with a report if I wanted to distribute a report I can do the same thing with these different objects over time for that report okay I'm going to make this two columns and I'm going to say okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to drag and drop whatever I want to, and I'm just going to give you a, a few quick examples because I'm going to show you one other example of a dashboard. So if I wanted to take Ecom1, just to show you what we did before, and drag that, I can select the view, and that would be my map view. And then if I wanted some transactions, I could come down here to Transactions and pick those out, and what I'd be able to do is put my funnel on there. And again, these workflows come right up. And, and then I could add another one to my funnel. Let's say I wanted the MasterCard transactions, and these are just some examples I have in here. So it's very easy to create those and drag those. And like I said before, the workflow is already done. Now what I'm going to do real quick here is create one other type of dashboard to show you. And that dashboard, if I go back to General, Create Dashboard, this is called a fixed position dashboard. 
Now a fixed position dashboard will let you drag and drop individual things on a backplane and move those around. So for example, if I wanted to come up to data and then go to business user reports and my transactions, I can pick specific things from the transactions. For example, if I go to buy funnel, and I go to the global location and buy funnel, I can actually see the metrics. So how many transactions were completed and how many were started. So I can go to transaction conversion rate. 